Good morning, everyone. Love your neighbor. And yes, that means your enemy too. Love your neighbor. And that means your enemy too. Well, before we get into that, let's do a little review from last week. Uh, we started off with, do you trust me? So I, had, I was trying to uh, kind of solidify something into your mind in a particular movie. Although I said, you know, what was it? Many of you got it was Aladdin. Uh, somebody yelled out Titanic. All right, so not Titanic. All right, if I wanted you to say Titanic, I would have said something like Rose, Rose, or maybe Jack, Jack. I'll never let go, Jack. And then she lets go. All right, so something like that. No, 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 I wanted you to think of Aladdin, so something much greater than Princess Jasmine here. This is uh, the mystical body of Christ, in particular uh, the bride of Christ, and Christ is the bridegroom. So he lays down his life for his bride. So, but he says, do you trust me? Jesus says that. We looked at that because it was the Sermon on the Plain. Okay, so Matthew explains the Sermon on the Mount. Luke says Sermon on the Plain. I'm sure Jesus gave that homily uh, a number of different times, whether it was on the mountain or on the plain. On the plain. So, it, indeed, what is he saying there? And it was, it was a little bit shocking. So he says, Blessed are you who are poor, for you shall be rich. Okay. Blessed are you who are, mourn, who are mourning now, for you will be comforted. And in a sense, he is saying that the full measure of justice is not meted out here. There is certainly, and especially in this country, I mean, that, that first line should really grab us because everyone here is rich. I mean, we're all part of the 20% of the richest people in the entire world. Remember, World Health Organization says the poverty level is at $10 a day or less. 80% of the world lives on $10 a day or less. So, take a step back and think, wow, I didn't know how rich I am, but I truly am. And in part, that's because of the country that we live in and the opportunities that we're given. And in a lot of other countries, you can work hard and yet it's just taken from you. Here, there's a, a safer manner of justice, but even then, even then, God is saying that, and I, I can imagine that all of us have experienced this where, you know, what, what good is it to be good and then to have this stuff happen? Why should I strive for excellence and then justice not being given to me? And, and Jesus says, do you trust me? The full manner of justice really does complete in heaven. Every single act, every single act, and this is what he's saying, will either increase your capacity to love or decrease it. And let's hope and pray, let's hope and pray that every single person here gets into heaven. And if that is the case, if that is the case, then everybody will experience heaven in a different way. And I'm not talking about you know, grandpa's up there golfing with grandma or something like that. No, the primary joy of heaven is union with God. The secondary uh, joy of heaven is union with all the saints, everybody who's there. But all of us will experience it differently because it will be directly determined by the capacity of love that we have cultivated in this world. So if you've made great choices, then you will have a great insight and a true communion with God and with others. If we've made minimal choices and we just have a small capacity to love, then, then that's where justice is meted out for all eternity. So he says, do you trust me? Keep doing what is right, no matter what. Now, today... That kind of seg segues into this challenge that we experience here. Jesus says, and we hear it echoed in St. Irenaeus, he says, what's the glory of God? Oh, the person fully alive. 
What does he want for us? He wants every single person here to be fully alive. And one of the ways that he's saying is that you, the pinnacle of, of loving is to love even your enemy. So if we look at David, if you remember, David was a king after God's own heart. Now, David made some huge blunders, and it certainly God wasn't saying, well, that's part of my heart. Remember Bathsheba? I mean, he made some really bad decisions. He repented of that. He proclaimed and confessed it before all. There were still consequent consequences in this world for David, and those were meted out. But what God truly loved is this. He loved when David reached the heights. Here, David has his enemy. He has his enemy right in his hand. If you missed that in the first reading, what happened was he was being pursued by Saul, who was really the former anointed. David has been anointed to be king, and Saul is pursuing him. God delivers Saul into David's hands. Okay, David's armor bearer is right there. He's got the spear. He's ready to drive it right through his head. So the question is, <clears throat> if God delivers your enemy right into your hand, what kind of person are you truly? Is there a sense of greatness within you, within me? If God would deliver my enemy right into my hand, what would I do? Would I crush him? It's a good question to ask yourself. See, David said, far be it from me to take the life of God's anointed, even though he knew he was the new anointed king. And Saul was literally trying to kill him. Jesus kind of unfolds it a little, in a, a different way. He says, turn the other cheek. Now, is Jesus a pacifist? Okay, that means, you know, no, you know, n no fighting at all. No. Okay? He's turning the other cheek is, is getting to a pinnacle of the way that the Christian loves. But it's, it's different so there will be times in your life, in my life, where wisdom will dictate that we come into a situation and it's time to run. Remember, wisdom is to think clearly, to judge rightly, and to act decisively. So we come into a situation, we evaluate it, this is a bad situation, I need to get out of here. And it's okay to run. In fact, it's wise to run. There are other times in our life where we come to a situation and I think it's time to fight. Well, come on, Father. You're, you're talking figuratively, right? Not physically. No. No, I'm talking there could be some times physically or otherwise where we have to stand. Now, fighting is, is normally in a sense of in defense, that's when it's legitimate. And if you're a police officer or you're in the military, I thank you for your willingness. So there are times where we got to run. Sometimes we got to stand our ground and fight. There are other times where we stand and we act in such a way that brings the person to a whole different understanding. That's what turn the other cheek is. See, back in the time where Jesus, uh, in his time, when you would slap a person of lower class, you'd slap them with your backhand. And Jesus is saying, turn the other cheek. And which would completely blow the mind of that person because what you're doing there is say, go ahead, slap me now. Slap me with your open hand, which is to say, treat me as your equal. A whole different level of understanding. Let me give you a couple of examples. I've given them before. 
And I hope that somebody's saying, well, I think he's given this one before. Good. Then remember it and you preach it. Because it's the revelation of Jesus Christ and it is the way to the fullness of life. Bishop Tutu, who uh, in Africa, uh, it was an Episcopal bishop, I do believe, and he was walking down the road, very narrow path, and in walking down the road, he came across another individual, so he was black, this person was white. And this man yelled out, I don't make way for gorillas. And Bishop Tutu just said, I do. Now, that doesn't quite hit what Jesus is saying, but can you imagine? It definitely brought that person to think. What really does capture, capture the heart of it is Mother Teresa and her interaction with the baker. Okay, you can go ahead and look at this. This is not like a myth type of thing. This is an account where uh, her orphans were starving and so she went to this baker and she said, my children have nothing to eat. Would you please give us some bread? And truly, this guy went <laughs> and spit in her face. Now, it's kind of if we really take it in, it's rather shocking. It can also be almost funny because you think that nobody would do that. But this man did. He spit in her face. Now, she, she didn't run. She didn't fight him. She stood her ground. And using that intellect of hers and a great spirit, she said, thank you for that gift that you have given me. Now, what are you going to give the children? And he cracked. He cracked and said, I'll give them the bread. And for the rest of his life, he gave bread to the orphans every single day. Again, it, it's, it's difficult. And that's why it's the pinnacle. It's hard to live this way because it does take intellect and it does take a great depth of spirit. And it also takes commitment because it's much easier just to kind of go with whatever you know, you're feeling and just go with that. Most of the time we have people, there's an interaction and we're just tempted to, to kind of make a joke of it or maybe even a passive aggressive expression at the person. But think about it. No, I'm not going to fight them. I'm not going to avoid them. I'm going to actually stand my ground here and see if I can act in a way that would bring them to a whole different understanding. I bet you've done that. I bet you have. When I was reflecting on it myself, I thought about this one individual who uh, he worked we'll say at a, a place that I ate often. And so I would go to him and he was, I don't know how to put it anywhere, uh, any other way but just to say he was mean. He was mean. And I didn't avoid his line. I didn't address it and say, you know what? You're mean. You're, you're an awful person or it's time to change your ways. Something like that. What I did was that anything that came out of his mouth, I found something redeeming to it and, and just kind of turned it back to him. And this went on for, for some time. And one time when I was interacting with him, the way that, he, I can't really remember the, exactly what happened, but he, the way that he spoke, it was different. And I just said, well, I'm sorry that it, it's not going well for you. If you want to talk after I'm finished eating, then we can take some time. And you could see the hardness. Um, again, he, he just cracked. And he actually started to well up in tears. And uh, I just kind of changed the subject and, and went on. 
But after I was finished eating, he wanted to talk. And it turns out that he had all kinds of health issues. He didn't appear to be sick, but he was. And what was worse is his wife was, was much worse off. She had all kinds of illnesses. And this man felt alone. And he had felt alone for years. And no one, and you know what? It was a lot easier for him just to be mean. It was a way to express the difficulty and the challenges that was going on in his life. And you know what? It was a lot easier about all those people around him that interacted with him every single day. And it was so much easier for them to be mean back or to joke or just to walk away. I'll go somewhere else. I don't need this. That's the challenge for you and me, to turn the other cheek. Not to run. Not to fight, but to stand our ground and act in such a way that you bring that person to a whole new level of understanding.